This is a video on using the simple interest formula when solving a word problem. Uh, first, let's review the simple interest formula. The simple interest formula says that the interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. And for short, we just say I equals PRT. And looking over this, uh, let's make sure we understand what each part represents. So P in here stands for the principal, and that's the initial amount invested into the account. All right, so that's your initial investment. R stands for the rate, and that's the simple interest rate. And it's very important that you use this as a decimal. If you don't use this as a decimal, uh, your answer will be 100 times too big. All right, so the interest rate always has to be used as a decimal. They'll give it to you as a percent, and you're going to have to convert it. T stands for time, and that's the length of the time of an investment. Uh, generally, it'll be in years, but use the length of time in terms of what it says in the problem. And when you multiply the principal times the rate times the time, you'll get the interest and that's the interest earned from the investment, so the amount of money you would earn on investing. Uh, let's take a look at an example. So in this example, uh, we have Jenna invests $13,000 into two separate bank accounts, one earning 6% 6, 6 simple interest and the other earning 3% simple interest. If at the end of one year she earned $682.50, in interest, how much did she invest into each account? So when solving a word problem, the first thing I like to think about is, you know, how many things am I looking for? And in this case, since they asked how much did she invest into each account, we're looking for two things, because there's two accounts. There's a 6% and there's a 3% simple interest. So we're going to have to actually have two let statements here. And I'm going to let x equal uh, the amount invested into the 6% account. because I'm looking for the initial amount invested in each, so I have to pick x to be one of them, either 6% or the 3%. It doesn't matter which you pick, but you have to pick one. So will x equal the amount invested in the 6% account? Now, if I invested x into the 6% account and I had 13,000 total, then the amount left over for the 3% account would be 13,000 minus x. And that'll be the amount invested and the 3% account. So those are the two things we're looking for. And it's very important that you do this as 13,000 minus x. Order matters here. It's right. It's the total minus the amount I gave the first person. So if I gave x to the 6% account, 13,000 minus x will be what's left over for the 3% account. Uh, next, I like to set this up in terms of a chart. It's just easier to think about. What we really want to find is the amount of interest earned for the 6% account and the 3% account and add those together equal to the total interest earned which is $682.50. So setting up our chart. First I'm going to have to have a column for the six per, or row for the 6% account and a row for the 3% account. And we're going to use our simple interest formula and the word simple interest in the problem are indicating that. And remember, our simple interest formula was I equals PRT. And I'm going to put the pieces that need to be multiplied together first, and then interest will be our last column, so it'll be our result. So we'll have principal times the rate times the time. And then if you multiply those together, you'll get the interest. So, the principal for our 6% account, well, we picked that. We called it x, right? x was the amount invested in the 6% account. So, principal is initial amount invested, that's x. And then the principal for the 3% account, that's our other let statement, that's going to be the 13,000 minus x. All right, it's important to have these let statements, this way you know where to fill them in in the chart here. Uh, the rate for the 6% account is going to be 0 0.06. Remember, we said we needed to use our percent as a decimal. The way you turn a percent into a decimal is that you can actually move the decimal place two places to the left. So if I have 6%, two places to the left would be 1, 2, and that would be 0 .06%, 0 0.06. And then it's not a percent anymore. So 0 0.06. And for the rate for the 3% account would be 0 0.03 by using a similar uh, moving the decimal to the left. You could also get that by dividing by 100. Uh, and the last thing, we need the time. The time here they said at the end of one year. So the time is going to be one for each of these. 
Now, this is going to give us the interest on each account when we multiply together. So for the 6% account, to find the interest, we're just multiplying the principal times the rate times the time. I generally like to multiply starting from this direction and going backwards just because it's easier to think about the numbers that way. So for the 6% account, 1 times 0 0.06 is 0 0.06 times x is 0 0.06x. And for the 3% account, 1 times 0 0.03 times 13,000 minus x. And make sure you have parentheses around this. So it's 0 0.03 times 13,000 minus x. Once we have this, we know the interest earned on the 6% account, and we know the interest earned on the 3% account. So since you know both of those, if you add those together, that should equal your total interest earned from earlier. That's $682.50. So we're going to set up an equation. All right, and this is going to be interest from 6% plus the interest from 3% should equal the total interest. And we know these pieces, right? The interest from the 6% is the 0 0.06x. The interest from the 3% is the 0 0.03 times 13,000 minus x. And the total interest is going to give us that 682.50. So continuing here, we'll go on to the next page. And I'll set up the equation there. So. Our equation will be 0 0.06x plus 0 0.03 times 13,000 minus x equals 682.50. And now you would solve this like normal. So first we're going to distribute. And to distribute we're going to bring the 0 0.03 through to each piece here. So we're going to have 0 0.06x plus 0 0.03 times 13,000 equals 390 minus 0.03x equals 682.50. And now we want to combine like terms. So 0.06x minus 0.03x will give us 0.03x plus 390 equals 682.50. Right, remember, we just combined like terms there. And now we'll solve them for x. We have to isolate it on one side. So we're going to subtract 390. Subtract 390. So we got 0 0.03x equals 682.50 minus 390 is 292.50. And then we're going to divide by 0 0.03 isolate x. So divide by 0 0.03, divide by 0 0.03, and we get x is equal to 292.50 divided by 0 0.03 equals 9,750. Now realize what we just found. We found x, which is 9,750. This is measured in dollars. And that's the amount invested going back to our let statement. That was the amount invested in the 6% account. So we want we know that that 97.50 is the amount that initially was invested in the 6% account. To find the amount invested in the 3% account, you do 13,000 minus x. And we'll do that now. So this was 97.50 in the 6% account. And then 13,000 minus x, which is 13,000 minus 97.50 equals 3,250 that's in dollars and that's in the 3% account. So we did it. We found the amount that was initially invested into each account. Now here's an example for you to try on your own.